Hello and welcome to this video on the concept of a basis. The idea of a basis is central to many different subjects in mathematics, and if this is your first exposure to this idea, then you're in for a treat. Let's get started. Let's suppose we're here in R3, it's three-dimensional space, and I have a jetpack on that allows me to go in four different directions. I can go forwards, backwards, left, right, up, down, and then a fourth direction along the direction of the vector 1, 1, 1, and that points out from the origin like so. Question, what parts of R3 can I visit with my jetpack on? Well, to answer that question, let's consider what travel in R3 with a jetpack would look like. I could travel along any multiple of that first vector, then any multiple of the second, then any multiple of the third, and then any multiple of the fourth. In other words, I can reach a point, say, ABC in R3, if there exists a linear combination of these four vectors that equals the vector ABC. So can I go to, say, the point 4, negative 5, 2? Well, clearly I can, because I just need to travel four units along vector V1, that would mean four units forward, negative five units along V2, that would be five units to the left, two units along V3, that's two units up, and then nowhere along V4. The linear combination here does come out to be four, negative five, two, and so I am there. In fact, it's easy to see that I can reach every point in A, every point A, B, C whatsoever in R3 this way, because I would just travel A units along B, V1, B units along V2, C units along V3, and zero units along V4. In linear algebra language, we'd say that the set of vectors V1, V2, V3, V4 spans all of R3, because I can linearly combine these vectors to construct any vector in R3 that I wish. More formally, we know that this set spans all of R3, because no matter which vector A, B, C I choose to try and reach, there will be a set of four weights on V1, V2, V3, and V4, such that the linear combination equals A, B, C. And I know that this is true, because if you put those four vectors into a matrix and set up the linear system AX equals B, where A is the 3 by 4 matrix, X holds the weights that I'm interested in, and B is my target vector, then there's a pivot position in every row of that coefficient matrix, which indicates that the system will always be consistent. The weights can always be found. Okay, so this set spans all of our three, but you might wonder why we bothered carrying along the vector v4, because we never really used it. In fact, we can reach any vector in r3, even if we removed v4 from the set. Now, this is an indicator that the set v1, v2, v3, and v4 is linearly dependent. This can be interpreted in several ways. One way is to see that one of the vectors, v4, is itself a linear combination of the other vectors. Another reason that this set is linearly dependent is that we can find a set of weights on the four vectors that gives us the zero vector in the resulting linear combination, even though the weights themselves are non-zero. For example, putting one on the first three vectors and negative one on the fourth, and then adding up, gives us the zero vector. So in other words, the set v1, v2, v3, v4 does span all of R3, but it's kind of bloated. If we're trying to see what points in R3 we can reach, then it would make sense to use a smaller, leaner set to try to do this. Okay then, here is a smaller linear set, the set V1, V2. I took the original set and removed V3 and V4 from it. Now this is certainly a smaller set as a result, but it, and it's easy to see that this set of two vectors is linearly independent, but there's a problem. I took out too much. By that I mean that even though I've slimmed down my set, I've now lost the ability to reach every point in R3. This set, although it's linearly independent, does not span all of R3, and you can see this readily just by noticing that no linear combination of these vectors will ever result in a vector with a non-zero third component. Or, more formally, you can put these two vectors into a 3 by 2 matrix and notice that there is not a pivot position in every row, and that means that for some b in R3, the equation ax equals b is going to be inconsistent. So if I include too much in my set of jetpack vectors, I can reach all of our three, but I might be using too many vectors, thereby being inefficient, because that set's linearly dependent. And if I use too few vectors, then my set might be linearly independent, but I might not be able to reach all points in R3. Now what I really want is a set that is both linearly independent and spans all of R3. Now such a set is what we're going to call a basis for R3. Here's the formal definition for it. Let's suppose that H is any subspace of Rn. Then a basis for H is a linearly independent set in H that spans all of H. 
So here this definition is a bit more general than we've dealt with up to this point because we are making it for any subspace of Rn. That might include all of Rn itself, but we can and will discuss bases for any subspace at all. For example, the null space of a matrix. In any event, the concept is the same. A basis for H, a subspace, is a set of vectors that is both linearly independent in H and spans all of RH. Informally, we can think of this as a basis is a minimal spanning set. It's a set that spans the subspace without including any redundant vectors. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to do several examples and several non-examples, so stay tuned.